Hi, Signature Associates and friends. Welcome to the Signature Edge Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping you design an uncommon and impactful career in the business of healthcare. Together, we are making a difference for our clients by lowering the rising costs and administrative burdens associated with great care. Engage with us as we spotlight big ideas to discover an uncommon you through leadership, teamwork, and focus on the healthcare industry. Think deeply, commit fully, and take yourself to the next level of performance. Well, welcome everyone to the Signature Edge. I'm Chris Woodhouse and so excited to be here with you today. Today, I am really excited to introduce to you a brief interview I did with Josie Rogers. She is one of our project managers in our PMO office here at Signature, and she just has some really great things to discuss about how to get things done. So let's take a peek at that, and then the other hosts and I will get back with you. I'm honored to be joined by Josie Rogers. She is a project manager, too, within our PMO office. Josie, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Chris. Thank you very much for having me on the show. We're going to be talking today a little bit about the I will get things done principle. But before we go there, would you just give us a little bit of background about where you were before you were at Signature? Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. And thanks for thinking of me for this principle of getting things done. Prior to joining the Signature Performance team, I initially had started my career in the nonprofit services world and became interested in social determinants of health. So that led me into working in healthcare operations for a community health center in Omaha. And I also did roles um, related to quality improvement for a managed care Medicaid organization, and most recently um, came from a population health role where I did project and program management um, at the Nebraska Health Information Exchange. Yeah, I I remember I got to sit in on your interview when uh, you were thinking of joining us here, and I was just so impressed by all the things you had done in your career, and it really did speak to me of how you were a go-getter, how you were a person who's really driven to get things done. And uh, when I look at our leadership playbook, I look at the definition of what it means. It says winners get things done. Not only do they get things done, they make sure they get the right things done. Winners find a way where others are stumped, give up and settle for less. I will be a winner and find a way. I will find a way to get the right things done. Now, as you find yourself in a project manager role here at Signature, uh, I think it's really so applicable to this concept, this to principle of, of getting things done because it's really what your job entails, right? Absolutely. So as a project manager, we support uh, the gathering of requirements and meeting deliverables for the, the broader project team. And it is 100% about bringing a project um, to closure within scope and budget. And so this, this is perfect principle for our entire project management organization, PMO department. So um, 100%, there's a saying that simplicity is the art of maximizing the work not done. Um, And this is 100% about prioritization, minimizing waste, and looking at team processes and helping to improve what we're, we're focusing on individually and as a team so that we're getting the right things done at the right time. It's interesting that you say get the right things done because that's in our definition as well. Is it possible to just get so many things done but yet not make any progress in your projects? 100% and I would say that that would apply both to to a project team and, and also personal endeavors, right? So I think um, one of the, the nice things about project management is we familiarize ourselves with a variety of methodologies, tailor those to a given team set of needs, and then help them prioritize what really needs to be done. And as you know, Chris, um, with with your um, awesome experience um, in, in previously in project management and now in, in program management, you know that that, that process of, of refining what needs to be done is something that is happening constantly because the needs of our stakeholders and clients are changing, adapting um, with, with ongoing feedback in the changing landscape of healthcare. It really is amazing and, and maybe uh, occasionally a sense of consternation how fast it changes and how, <laughs> how often we have to readjust our priorities, isn't it? Yep, just as soon as you think you have it down, it changes. So it's, it's good to be nimble. Uh, it is. 
So what is it that really drew you to Signature and what the work we're doing here? So the, the mission in and of itself is compelling, considering what we need to do to um, you know, reduce the, the enormous amount of administrative costs within healthcare, which is our primary mission, but then it's also considering improving the lives of the people we work with. So it really speaks to the relationships that we build as a company, uh, both internally amongst colleagues and then externally with our, with our clients. Um, and, and that is really the, that culture that is both internal and external is what drew me to signature performance along with the mission to focus on healthcare. Um, and, and um, you know, I just celebrated my first uh, year work anniversary or anniversary. And I can tell you that it's only gets better as far as um, being able to witness how we do fulfill that mission. Uh, and so I, I've been extremely pleased to be, but be on this team and, and be someone who can help get things done along with very impressive colleagues and teammates. Yeah, the, the way the signature mission is lived out is truly impressive because it's not just outward focus, it's also inward focus. And so we're all benefiting on a daily basis from being able to work with each other. And I know I've enjoyed working with you and uh, interacting with you. So it's, it's been great. Now, I know that in your journey uh, in the project management office, you were able to attain your PMP, which is your uh, project management professional certification. Tell me how uh, that was for you and, and how you were able to apply this principle to the pursuit of that, because I've been through that and that is not an easy certification to get. Yeah, I recently, um, within the last month, was able to obtain that certification, and you're right, it's not easy. So for me, um, some of those um, organization systems that we uh, create for our broader project management teams have been useful for me to apply on kind of a micro scale. For me, um, to, to balance the competing priorities and, and the rigor of the project management professional, I really relied on personal organization systems. Um, for me specifically, I like to follow the work of Michael Hyatt. He has a free to focus system that really helps to prioritize the right things each day, gives you opportunity to reflect for reflection and define what productivity means to me individually, and then really look at cutting non-essential items and eliminating waste. That's really helped me to say, what do I have to get done today? What does the team need me to do today? And where do I fit in a little time for studying? And very excited to have been able to complete that. Yeah, Michael Hyatt, I'll have to look him up. It sounds like he's got some great concepts. Uh, now, as we kind of close out our session, I noticed that one of your strengths is strategic. And uh, I think it's really a perfect strength to have to be in the project manager role because the intent of that is being able to quickly solve problems and navigate your way around roadblocks. And, you know, as a project manager, a lot of our time and effort is spent in problem management and risk management. So what do you do when you don't see a solution to the problem immediately in front of you? And, and how do you overcome that? Because that's a big piece of getting things done is, is overcoming these obstacles. I thank you, Chris. So I think one of the things I do is, is take a step back, consider that um, folks who are close to the problem may have the solution, um, and really investigate alternatives that the, the right answer might not be there immediately, but I give it a little bit of time. And we also have great resources within our PMO and broader signature um, to, um, audience to, to um, brainstorm together. So I, I think giving it a little time, giving it a little reflection, and then pulling in resources when you need brainstorming um, is the, the great recipe. That, that's great advice, Josie. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you spending some time with us today, talk a little bit about how to get things done. And uh, so excited to work with you and, and thank you for all you do for Signature. Thank you, Chris. Well, welcome back to The Edge. And Chris, that was an impressive interview. Thank you so much. Hey, everyone. My name is Mark Mathia. I'm here with my co-host, Amy Hennings and Chris Woodhouse, and I want to welcome you to another edition and episode of The Edge. Welcome, everybody. Hello, Hi, everyone. Mark. Hey, it's great to be back. Okay, I'm going to start this off in a weird direction before we get in the nuts and bolts of it, because getting things done has been something that I've struggled with, and I just want to admit it to the other leaders out there. I have a strength in my top five called Activator. And you know what I'm really good at? Getting 
things started. But what I always recognize is that getting things done is a critical component of getting things started. And there's been times in my career when I started so many things that they were all hanging open. And it was such a crush to just start wrapping things up, trying to get them done, caused me tons of stress. And by the way, it's why I like working with you both, because you have an uncanny ability to get things done. And so getting started is a good place to begin, but getting things done, that's that's critical. What is it about you both that help you to get things done? Did it come natural or was it a struggle like it was for me? Well, I can definitely say it was a learning and growth experience and it's not a one-time fix either. Uh, I will admit I've been remodeling my master bathroom at home for longer than I would like to say <laughs> it should be going on for, but uh, th there are good reasons behind the delay. But it, it's definitely a, a growth area and a thing that any of us can learn techniques and principles to apply to our life to make sure that we can go to that complete the task phase and, and get the things done, not just start and, uh, and progress. You know, from my perspective, one of the things I learned very early in my career from one of my very first managers is they made us have a one sheet piece of paper that had all the things that needed to get done. And you're, you were on, um, you had to turn it in every Friday of what you were going to do the next week. And I still have this sheet. I carry it around and, I, and it's, it has evolved over my life, but I always have this sheet of paper with everything on it that I need to get done. And then I plan out what I'm going to get done each day. My biggest problem is I think I can get far more done in a day than what I actually can. So mm -hmm. then I'm irritated with myself that I didn't get more done. So I have to really, one of the things I've done to kind of get over that is at the end of the day, when I'm packing up my stuff, I write down in my planner, my win of the day. I have, I have it. And so then at the end of the week, I pick one of them that is my win of the week. And that's helped me feel better about when I don't get everything done that I think I can get done. I had 15 things I thought I could get done yesterday afternoon. I, I got by. Isn't it interesting, well, though, how you can build out those lists and there's really no end in sight, right? Our to-do lists, if we really sat down and thought about it, like you can just continue to come up with things you have to do. Well, not necessarily have to, but things that should be done or could be done, right? It's really important to focus that, isn't it? To, to address which of those are the right things to do and to pursue. And I think that you just nailed it, the right things to do and pursue. And here's the challenge for leaders everywhere. Naming those right things means you have to prioritize those things. So getting things done when everything seems important, I think the highest skill is taking all these important things and figuring out what's most important. So find a way to get the right things done. Now, as a challenge to us, what are some ways that we would recommend that, that people have used in the past that seem to? I know uh, Josie really did a nice job of talking, talking about Michael Hyatt, and, and I've studied Michael Hyatt, and I learned a few key things in my leadership journey with him. So I took a peek at Michael Hyatt and his model. haven't delved in as far as I'd like yet, but I thought it's interesting. He has three main principles to stop, cut, and act, right? So planning, essentially organize and eliminate distractions and then do what you're supposed to do. And a practical tip that I use is in my Outlook, I actually have set up categories in my email and I have the four quadrants, right? Urgent, important, not urgent, important, not important, but urgent and not urgent, not important. And depending on what email comes in, I put them in a category and really, I spend the majority of my time focusing on the urgent, important stuff. And it's amazing how much goes into the not urgent, not important that could be a distraction if it wasn't properly placed on, on my email list of tasks to do. That's great. And, you know, one of the things that I do to help stay organized, and I know that Amy um, has really brought this to our team as well, is, is focusing on what's most essential. I won't get into how we do that because I'll let Amy talk about that. But, but I will tell you that as an additive to that, Chris, rather than just waiting in categories, categorizing my to-dos, I like to set intention. Mm -hmm. And these are intention of what is most important to me. And the one question I like to ask is, if I get this one thing done, everything else 
will fall into place? What would that one thing be? So I really try to get really narrow in that focus and bring what I want to bring. Otherwise, what happens for me is I have so many requests that I'm just managing everybody's requests instead of getting to my heart work. And that heart work for me is what's essential to help drive my engagement and help me really love the work that I'm doing. You know, Mark, you talked about what our team does, and I can go into that, is we have a process called Big Three. And on Mondays, the group gets together and we say the Big Three impacts we are going to make this week, the Big Three projects we're going to do, the Big Three commitments we're going to make to each other as a team that we're going to get done. And what's great about talking about it amongst the teams is sometimes it gives us an opportunity to say, that one's not as important right now put this one up first and it helps us to really understand what each person's doing and helps us to be accountable to make sure we're all doing having impactful work and i think um it the team started it, it was me and addison we it, when the team was three people on the experience team and me and addison started doing it then mark got into it and then it just and now it's possible now we have multiple big threes during the week and that has been, I think, something that's really helped the team stay out, not only aligned, but has helped everybody make sure that they're doing impactful work, doing the right things that week. So I really like using that term, how am I going to make an impact? How am I going to help other departments feel the progress and the momentum that we get things done? And, and feelings is one of those weird things to bring up. But when it comes to getting things done, if you're getting the right things done, those around you feel the difference that you're making. And I think that's really important category to consider because it extends beyond me to the entire group and the work that I'm performing. It's an interesting thing. And as you go through project management training, there's a concept called the Pareto principle, which the rest of the world knows as the 80-20 rule, right? Where 20% of the effort you put out results in 80% of the actual results that occur. And so it's it's a skill it's something that takes practice and effort to identify what is that 20 percent and um when i was going through the emerging leaders at signature I was mentoring with chris viro he recommended i read the book the one thing we've already kind of touched on that a bit by gary keller and, and jay papasan and it's just some really powerful concepts there um to pick that one thing that is going to move the bar it's going to move the ball forward, whatever you want to use as far as your, your metaphor there. But as I was doing the claims XM implementation, that was my daily thing in the morning. Sit down. What is one thing that I can actually get done today? Because the number of meetings, the number of activities, the number of things that were going on didn't allow for a lot of just sit and screen and work time. But I made an effort every single day to pick one thing that I knew if I got this done today, it's going to move us forward in some, some fashion. And uh, it really is a powerful concept to identify that and spend the time thinking about it. One other thing I've heard that is helpful too is we're all really focused on to-do lists, but I've also in my life done a not to-do list. What's a list of things that I'm not going to do anymore and have that because that also helps you get to the right place on what's really essential and impactful. That's so good, Amy. As a recovering activator, one of the things I've noticed <laughs> is that it actually drains my energy. So if I half start or quarter start a bunch of things that aren't important, and I don't have that habit that you just discussed about cutting it off my list, saying it's not important, then it will drain me emotionally. And then I won't do anything. I get frozen or stuck. And I feel like, well, I'm just not making any progress. And that is the worst place to be in, in my perspective. I just really don't like being there. Well, and research proves that. They say that half done projects are more stressful than having a large quantity of projects. It's the half done that causes the most angst in people. And so, yeah, I bet, I bet you did feel that. Exactly. And people high in responsibility and some of the other strengths that have them gain psychological ownership over the things they said yes to. This is not easy. Stop doing is, is counterintuitive. It's like, well, I'm letting people down. But if you stop doing, make the decision, make it known, communicate, and then cross it off the list. It's like completing it. And it just wasn't important enough to get done at that moment. And I think that's, that's one of those skills that can all help us. But I think it's an advanced leadership skill to be brave enough to, to know your limits and to set stop doing lists. Yeah, I can honestly say that 
when I get stressed in the week, it's because there's so many open items that are in flux, right? That we're tracking. We've got defects. We've got whatever it might be that's come in the door that we need to work on enhancements. How do you, you know, the stress for me is I've, I've got all these balls up in the air. How do I keep them floating? And the answer for me is to get them down, put them in a spreadsheet, organize them, prioritize them and remove those that are important. And that's the only way I can eliminate that stress is to be able to see it, understand it and pick what matters. Mm, that's so important. And then by doing that buys you time to do this next thing. How do you finish these projects with excellence? And I think it's really important for us to not just get things done, even though that is very important, but it's get things done with excellence so that we're always solving the bigger problem. What would you suggest in terms of how do you add this element of excellence into this conversation? Our name is Signature Performance, right? And that signature piece is you're writing your name to something, right? You are, this is mine. You know, it goes back to that ownership concept that we previously talked about. Mm -hmm. And just checking things off the list isn't, isn't the signature way. It's not how we do things. We finish things in a way that has excellence that we are proud to sign our name to. And I think that's one thing that sets us really far apart from other companies is it's, it's not just completing the task. It's, it's making an impression uh, for our clients and, and the lives of the people we work with, making them better. And I'm going to take it a little different way. Um, I'm going to talk to all the maximizers out there who can't finish projects because it's never perfect enough. That's me. And I had to learn a different concept and it's called get mo, good enough to move on. And that sometimes I have to tell myself to get mo so that we can finish it and it is excellent enough where I will sit on something for really long and let it linger because I, I think I can make it just that much better. And I'm actually not getting it. The impact's not even that much more by spending that extra bit of time on it. I think, I think that's a really good point. There, and, and by the way, welcome to the Signature Edge confessional booth. Uh, we like to get <laughs> things done. We all struggle. Okay. All right. But, but if you're a new leader or someone thinking about joining the firm and getting involved, all of this can be intimidating because it takes teams and people and relationships to get things done. If you were that new person coming on or thinking about joining us or even partnering with us as a client, what advice would you give them? Well, I would say no one here stands alone, right? We're supported by great teams, great individuals who have the expertise, who've, who've have the experience, have, have been through the mill of uh, crazy projects, crazy pursuits, uh, accomplishing the uncommon, you know, and just, you know, use your team, work together. I think everyone here is willing and able to put on many different hats and support the efforts that are underway to make sure they they do be, get completed and completed with excellence. I would say that if, if it's something that sounds really intimidating to you, I would also tell you that when you get stuff done and you're part of a team that's moving stuff forward, that feels just really good. It's worth the work, the time, the effort to go do that. And I think that that's when it's really important to make sure you're doing work you love and figuring out what are you just drawn to that you love and make sure you get into that spot because then getting things done, doing stuff with excellence becomes effortless, right? And so that's what I would tell people who are new to this concept. Great advice, team. I have really enjoyed our chat today. I want to issue a challenge uh, to the people who are listening. And that challenge is simply this. This week, why don't you try a stop doing list? I want to free you psychologically to do your best work. And the challenge then is simply this. Look at your list. If you don't have a list, maybe it's make a list, but look at your <laughs> list. And if there's things on there that aren't important or have you pushed off week after week after week, maybe take it off that list. Move on to a higher priority. So try making a stop doing list would be your homework. Team, thank you so much for spending time with me today. I always glean so much. What a great interview with Josie to get us kicked off. I am in awe of her skills. She's pretty amazing. Yeah, we're, we're lucky to have her on the team. All right, everyone. Well, let's go out and get the edge. Let's go get stuff done. Let's get stuff done. Signature Performance is the foremost leader in healthcare administration. 
Your work advancing our mission is transforming healthcare in the U.S. Signature is bringing together the best and brightest in healthcare. Discover opportunities at www.signatureperformance.com slash careers and be inspired to build an uncommon career that matters.